popped up. Can I get you guys anything? Got some great brownies in today. Emily was still swirling through a torrent of emotions, but she turned with astonishing politeness and said, Actually, do you think we could just have five minutes? The waiter gave a nod and vanished. Bless his discretion. Emily turned to her beloved and said, Why? Why what? There's a million whys, Emily said with an angry shrug. Pick one and answer it. Katie sighed. I haven't been happy for a while. Right. But rather than talk about it, you just started looking for someone else, Emily said, folding her arms across her chest. It wasn't like that. I didn't look as such. No. So how did you meet this someone? Katie hesitated. Work. Emily's nostrils flared. It's Alison, isn't it? Katie didn't answer. What was it you said to me a few months ago, when I said you were hanging out with her a lot? Ah, oh, yes, that was it. She's just a friend. Emily arched an eyebrow while she considered the last six months, now through a very different lens. You know what's funny? I didn't even actually think you were cheating. I just thought maybe you fancied her. I got jealous, yes. But I never really thought you'd do this to me. For six months, Emily said in a flat tone. It was curious to her how removed she was beginning to feel from this. She supposed that was shock. She should have been screaming, crying, something. Instead, she was going at this like she was finding out her favourite chocolate bar was being taken off the shelves. Peeved, but not a lot more. And she wasn't the only one that had noticed. I've got to say, you've been very calm about this, Katie said. Yes, I know. I presume that's why you decided to tell me this in public. Why you just dropped in at the place I come to every Friday for lunch, no notice? I can't believe I was pleased to see you. I thought it was a sweet gesture. Can you imagine? She said, amused. You were just trying to avoid ugliness. Because you know I'm not one for public scenes, don't you? No one likes ugliness, do they? Katie said defensively. No, I suppose not. But I rather think you owed me a scene, don't you? Just as some sort of penance. Since you're destroying my life and everything. I'm not destroying your life, Katie wheedled, or not forever. This must hurt, but it's only temp- Stop talking now, Katie, Emily said firmly. She never talked to Katie like this, giving her short shrift. She was usually the one asking for kindness, compassion. This was almost fun. Almost. I don't need you to tell me that what you're doing isn't all that bad. It's bad. It's really bad, Emily said quietly with a flash of her eyes. Then why aren't you more upset? Katie asked. I don't know. I'm sure I will be at some point, Emily said, and she waved the waiter over. I'll have that brownie you were talking about, and some tea. Thanks. And for you? the guy said, turning to Katie. Katie shook her head. Oh, I'm not staying, thanks. Places to be? Emily asked. She realised something. She's waiting for you, isn't she? Katie had the good grace to blush. Is she nearby? Parked around the corner, Katie admitted. Perhaps I'll have a word with her, Emily said, almost to herself. There might be some admin to do in the handover. She won't know about your allergy to soy, or that you take two sugars in your tea, or that you like to be taken from behind with a strap on. Oh, wait, she'd know that last one, wouldn't she? Katie was bright red now. Emily, please don't make this any harder. That's not what you said when I had the strap on. Oh, Jesus, Katie moaned. Let me just ask you something before you go.